today's video lesson, we're going to provide a work solution to a quiz that I gave my IB Year 1 economic students on the short-run costs of production faced by a firm. So pause the video here and study this table. At first we're going to fill in the blank spots in this table, which include the total variable costs, the total costs, the marginal costs, the average variable costs, and the average total costs of a firm in the short run. Once I've filled in the table, you can pause the video, study the results, before I move on to the graph. In the next part, we're going to plot the marginal cost, the average variable cost, and the average total cost in our graph on the right. As I plot these points from the table, observe the shape of the three cost curves that I'm graphing. First, we have the marginal cost curve, which as you see, slopes downwards and then upwards due to the diminishing returns of our variable resource, which is added to a fixed amount of resources. Next, we have the average variable cost, which shows us the per unit wage costs of this firm. Notice that average variable cost slopes downwards until it intersects marginal cost and then it slopes upwards. Finally, we're drawing our average total cost curve, which includes, takes into account the average fixed costs. ATC also slopes downwards until it hits the marginal cost curve, then it slopes upwards. In this next question, we're going to focus on the law of diminishing marginal returns and try to explain how this principle explains the shapes of these short run cost curves. So once I've typed the answer here, you can pause the video, read over the answer, then look back at the graph and see if my explanation holds true. The law of diminishing returns says that as more labor is added to a fixed amount of capital beyond a certain point, the productivity of labor will decline. Now this helps explain the shape of the marginal cost curve, which eventually, due to the rising marginal cost of production, resulting from the fall in labor productivity, all costs, including average total and average variable costs, will rise in the short run, and ultimately a firm will be limited in the amount that it can produce by the amount of capital that it has. In order to expand production in the long run, a firm will need to acquire new capital. Let's move on to the next question here. Next, we are going to explain the relationship between marginal costs and the average costs, including variable and total costs. Notice here that as long as marginal cost is below the average costs, the average costs are decreasing. If marginal cost is greater than average, the average will increase. Now I'll explain why. If the last unit I produce costs less than the average unit, then the average cost falls. However, if the last unit I produce costs more than the average, the average rises. Moving on to our final question. This question refers to the average fixed costs. It asks you to calculate the average fixed cost at an output of 1 and at an output of 8. Average fixed cost is simply total fixed cost divided by the quantity of output. Now we want to explain why average fixed cost decreases as the output increases in the short run. Since a firm's total fixed costs are fixed, since they refer to the costs of fixed resources, specifically capital and land, the average fixed cost only decreases as output increases, since we take the total fixed cost and divide it by a larger and larger number. In accounting, this is referred to as spreading the overhead. Overhead costs are the costs of capital and land. The more a firm produces, the lower the average or per unit fixed costs of production. So pause here, read over the answer, and then we'll take one last look at the whole quiz. Zooming back out here, you can study the table once more, look at how the points look on a graph, and that wraps up this lesson. Thanks again.